Hello and welcome to episode one of Rangers TV. So uh, we had a few comments back from the last episode and uh, despite the rain we're out here doing uh, what we need to do. Um, so I'm going to go over a few things. So one of the comments we got was that we did kind of ramble a lot in episode zero. And that, to be honest, we were trying to get through most of the information that we had for the actual show. So we're going to go over in concise points and they will appear here on the left telling you exactly what we're, what we're, what we're about. So, we're not going to go into the history, we're just going to say what we're, what we're doing here. The Rangers is a group of people, the ideal is to bring together a group of people who are able to create their own media. And to this end, we have created a radio show, which has been going on for a year now. Two years almost. Um, we're now starting with a TV show, obviously you're watching it now, and we'll soon be producing a quarterly magazine called The Rangers Campaign Log. We're also trying to get together individuals who are prepared to learn skills needed for urban and rural survival. But not just not survival in the ends of an apocalypse or a shit hit the fan situation. Not just that, but also survival in general terms. How to maintain a cohesive lifestyle and how to keep things going in your life but be a good person to yourself make sure you're never in trouble but also your fellow rangers are never in trouble but there are all, there are two only two rules to the rangers two rules no racism and no homophobia those are the only rules we have and that's it essentially And uh, welcome to the Rangers TV uh, review of the Highlander copy of the Coleman stove, uh, which we managed to find on eBay for £20, which is a pretty good price for it, considering the Coleman one's about 80 So it comes in this little bag, and uh, when you unpack it, it's a little jumble of stuff, but uh, you take out the armoured hose, you stretch out the legs, and the whole thing snap down into place. You then affix the gas bottle, which uh, screws in, you can get these anywhere. Um, typically it's only Coleman fuel that comes like this, but it comes in a variety of sizes, all of which will attach to this stove. I like the 250mm one because it's about a weekend's worth. Just screw that on there. Now the first time you screw it on it will be really tight, don't worry about it because it's a very solid fitting. So there, you lay it out on a flat surface. And here's the regulator valve, and uh, you see you want the canister as far away from the flames as possible. I'm going to use an old, old uh, cheap pound shop mess tin for this, which is pretty battered. Uh, it's a good idea, put your water in first, or you heat it because it will hold the mess tin down on the cooker. Undo the valve. As you see, it's really powerful. It's really, really loud. And it shouldn't take too long to get this boiling. Now when you light this, it couldn't be simpler. Um, I've removed the mess tin so you can see the thing and turn, see the ignition system and turned it around. So what you do is you open the gas valve so you can hear it and then you push in this red button oh, and then it's lit. Now it does burn really, really quick so pay attention to it and don't do what we're doing here and put it on a blanket. That's purely so you can see it a bit better rather than putting it on the brass. Now literally this took all of a minute to boil because it's really really hot. So as you can see it's boiling so we might as well make use of that boiling water. This fuel is going to be hard to come by. Okay, so we're going to take one of the elements from the uh, culinary upgrade box which is a coffee bag. There's literally a teaspoon of coffee, a teaspoon or two of coffee whitener and a teaspoon of sugar if you take it. So they're easily transportable, you can keep them for quite a long time but they mean that you don't have to buy any supplies when you're out 
sort of like just about on going, going camping or you need sort of like just coffee hanging up and they're a lot cheaper than the all-in-one sachets that you can get from most coffee manufacturers. So we'll take our plastic cup, let's literally undo the coffee bag. And rather obviously pour water in. good cup of coffee. Well, a bad cup of coffee, but it's a cup of coffee you wouldn't have otherwise had. And we're out here again. I've um, got a, an interesting concept to bring to you guys that shouldn't cost you any money at all, but will really improve your camping experience or your bug out bag experience, and it takes up very little space. Shouldn't cost you a penny. Um, we call it the culinary upgrade box, or the cup. And uh, basically it's a little box that contains all those things you can essentially um, make off with from uh, chain uh, fast food stores or coffee shops and stuff like that. It will actually give you a little bit of an edge for improving the preparation of your meals and stuff like that and ramping up how much you enjoy your food, which is really important because if you hate the food that you're stuck with, you're going to have a pretty miserable time. So I've pretty much packed out this. This is just a little waterproof box. Um, you can eat, you've either got them knocking around your house or you can pick them up for about a pound or two dollars at most hardware stores. Get the ones with the plastic seals or the rubber seals that lock down positively because you're going to be putting a lot of stuff in here. And literally this is stuff that I've basically taken from fast food restaurants as you can see. There's various logos, things like pepper, salt, you know, you can't have too much of this stuff. I mean if you are in a survival situation you're going to want as much salt as you want. Sweeteners, you can either trade these with other people, you can take sugar, you can use that for baking and making something that's sweet if you've got some flour to hand. Um, I've put a disposable lighter in here that has a torch built into it because that's there was just enough space and it's an extra replacement for your belt line kit and a folding pen knife that cost me about a dollar. It's not very good, but but it's not very good, but it's very cheap and I won't miss it if I lose it. And then there's things like uh, mayonnaise, which will improve anything with rice in it. Uh, you've got ketchup. Um, and also, if, uh, if you have those really horrible ice creams or you know someone that eats them, um, snatch one of the spoons that comes with it and saw it down so it'll fit in the box. So you've got an extra spoon, and I think I've got an extra fork in here from a, from a, uh, a cup of ramen. Now, you should have knife, fork and spoon, but it's nice to be able to replace and double up on kit, especially in a box as small as this. So the only thing you found was this. Yeah, not very good off for food, but you've got a, more or less a, a little replacement for your belt line kit. Um, and, oh, and also, um, I would recommend if I've included them in there, these things, these freshen up wipes that you can get from uh, lots and lots of different um, sort of fast food restaurants. They're really great. They're not only great for cleaning you up and your kit, you can actually clean out your knife and a Leatherman and stuff with one of these and a stick. But also, uh, if you are so inclined, you can clean off a CD if you need to sort out some media if it's become dirty or scratched. It'll clean pretty much anything. And they burn because they've got alcohol in them, so it's extra tinder. Um, don't just throw away the packets if it's a paper packet because it will make tinder. So keep all this stuff dry and put it back in the cup until you need to light a fire. Um, so that's pretty much the concept of sort of like, you know, make taking advantage of the core political's ability to throw stuff away and to produce lots of disposable things and recycle those into something that's going to be useful to you when you go camping or you need to make use of your bug out bag. Okay, well we're going to be looking at now our cheapest ration pack. Uh, we've all put this together for under a pound each. It does include buying some things in bulk but uh, we do. We have got one day's worth of food for under a pound. So, yeah, we've got a sort of breakfast ensemble, a main meal, and sundries, including a small lunch. Now, obviously, this is very cheap, but the great thing about this is it's completely upgradable. We've gone for the cheapest things possible. But if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, you can get more stuff in there, something a bit tastier, but it does pack down pretty well. And that's about the size there 
of an actual ration pack, military ration pack, about that size. Obviously a bit more compressed and a bit well fit, more fitting, but that's about the right size. So we're going to go through what's in these now. Okay, so in the breakfast one, we've got a packet of chicken and mushroom pasta and sauce which just uh, is uh, just uh, put it into a mess tin and cook it with some water the instructions are on the back obviously and two packets of cup of soup of cup soup so you just add water to these in your mug and uh, boiling water obviously into these into your mug it's a nice soup to have on the go. Uh, if you take a Thermos flask with you, you can also always um, cup these up for the rest of the day. Once you've done your, your breakfast, you can, you can probably have these for your lunch. In the lunch area, uh, with your sunrise, we've got some instant noodles. Which are these? Curry flavour quite nice but again this is just the same as the uh, as the um, pasta and sauce just you just do them up in water very easy very quick and easy but we've also got our little packs of drink here hot drink which is this in this case is coffee but it can you can do it with tea as well if you get little tea bags and put them in there we've just put them in a uh, cheap plastic bags little baggies and tied them off but there's coffee whitener and enough sugar in there so you can obviously customize them entirely we've got four in here in this bag four all together so that's four drinks and that's one day one day's worth of drinks are in there take them all out put them down here if you can see moving on we've got our main meal the evening meal the dinner now the evening meal is based on having a hot meaty course which is in this case it's a goblin pudding in a little tin um, these do last for quite a while they've got a decent shelf life on them very small 140 grams these cook really well you can boil these in their cans in your mess tin you just have to make sure that you actually pierce the pierce the bottom and cook them that way interesting thing about these as well this this can once you've uh, cooked your meal and you've taken the meal out, take the lid off completely and obviously file all the inside of it down so it's nice and safe. You can use this as a, as a very rudimentary mug, a small cup to drink from. So that's another bonus from that. We're always on the lookout for bonuses with the, with the stuff we have. But with that meat, we've also got something to go with it because having that on its own would be pretty, would, wouldn't be pretty exciting. So we've thrown in here some gravy, some gravy granules and some instant mash, some instant mashed potatoes. So once, you, once you've actually cooked this in your meat, in your water, you can use some of that water to do your instant mash and the rest of your water to make your gravy. And then you just pour it all on, obviously. So the best thing to do when you're cooking this is once you've cooked this, pour some of your water out into a mug and do your gravy. Because your gravy doesn't really need cooking at all, you just pour your hot water out into a mug and mix it up, there you go, gravy, sorted. And then with the rest of your water, you make your instant mash in your mess tin. Which is, again, it is very simple. You just pour your instant mash mix into your water, make sure, just keep stirring it while you're still warming it up. And then once it, once it looks around about instant ma mash, potato style, you're ready to eat. Add it all together and you've got a decent meal. Of course, with all this that we've had here, the um, cheap and easy ration pack, there's not much in it for taste. So what you can do, if you've using the culinary upgrade box or the cub which we've just gone over if you're putting herbs and spices in there which I would recommend you can add those to your meals to give yourself a bit of extra variety curry powder is always a good one Chinese five spice um, all the other spices um, thyme some herbs and spices a good idea to put in there to give you some extra flavor if you um, if you have if you have instant curry noodles quite a lot you often get the little flavor sachets in them and if you don't use them throw them into your cup because you can add them into any other food that you're doing at any time. It gives it a little bit of extra flavour. 
And if you obviously want to add anything sweet to this, you can add uh, boiled sweets or chocolate bars, but, or um, say for instance breakfast bars if you're not happy with the actual breakfast thing that we've got. You can add breakfast bars into that. You can also add in trail mix and uh, these the little um, sort of uh, sesame snack bars, the new um, normal caramel and chocolate ones. You can add little rice breads in there as well. Um, but one thing is major about this, we've gone for the £1 price point to keep this as low cost as possible. It's a major thing for us, but obviously you can add and remove stuff uh, to it as you like. And uh, one thing we would definitely suggest is that you try everything out. There's no point following our advice and buying goblin meat and gravy pies if you don't like them. So buy a couple, one of each, you know, one of, the, one of each flavour and cook it and try it. Because the worst thing that you could do is buy food, take it with you in your rat pack into the field, you eat it and then you find out that you absolutely can't stand it because that's going to be the worst thing that could ever happen to you. You're going to be out in the field and you're going to have no food that you like and that's a major, major morale drainer. The idea of food goes twofold. It's not just to keep your sustenance up, because if it was to keep your sustenance up you could just eat food supplements, but that's not what it's about. It's about morale. That is something that you know we have to stress here. Food is there to also keep your morale up, and if your morale's not up you are not going to be an effective individual. Hi, my name is Harkin and this is Cooking with Harkin. Um, today we're going to be making some bread and uh, yeah, big shout out to Vega Graf for actually doing this stuff for us. Um, if my cat starts meowing in the background, please ignore him. Um, so, ginger is what we're going to use today. We've got some flour, some sugar, a pack of yeast, oil, salt. You'll also need a bread tin. Um, you can get these from a sort of bog standard cheapo shop um, or stupid market. A large bowl, a set of scales and a kettle preferably with some warm water in it. Um, to start with we're going to place the obvious one here, the flour, in the bowl on the scale. You want 325 grams of flour. You also want to add some salt. about that much. It's about a teaspoon, but I don't want to measure things. Um, about a tablespoon of olive oil, which is about that much. And yeah, and the nittiest trick I've ever found for making bread that actually works is to get yourself some warm water, not hot, warm, excuse my armpit. And for this recipe you're going to want 200 grams. If you place a bowl on a or measuring a uh, measuring device. Um, 200, 200 grams of water is 200 mils of this water, which is quite cool. Decimalisation and all that. stupid when it gets in contact with sugary water, it doesn't really matter. And if we were to wait, you would actually see that there are small bubbles forming. 
So we're going to add about, I don't know, three quarters of that and see what it does. There's cut. And all you do is take your hand, preferably clean, and mix. And what you should end up with is a lump of strangely bread like dough. If you don't wash your hands, by the way, you will have very clean hands and very dirty bread, which doesn't taste very nice. As far as you have wetter dough, then it is to have dry dough. Dry dough doesn't do anything, wet dough makes bread. And the other advantage is that when you need it, you always incorporate more flour anyway, so you will always end up with a, uh, a nice loaf of bread. So take your bath, leave it behind, and then just start kneading. Okay, so when you finished um, playing with your dough, kneading it, um, about 10 15 minutes normally does it, um, just stick it back in the bowl, take yourself a clean tea towel, or in my case, somewhat dirty, place it over the top and leave it for a good sort of 45 minutes. You need to see it double in size and it will magically grow. Um, okay, then, so we've got our bread and it's risen as you can see. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I actually made twice as much as I needed, so just to prove it to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to place it again on the floured surface. Like that. And all I'm going to do is knock all the air, it's called knocking back, knock all the air back out of your dough. And again, just mix it all the way through. It forms gluten for some reason. I don't know how or why, it just does. And if you knock it back and then do it and let it rise again, it will um, be a nice tasting loaf of bread. So you're going to take your bread tin um, and add some oil. Just a drop. And then just spread it around inside. And this is just prevents the whole lot from sticking when it actually cooks. Um, if you don't do this, then you end up with a brick in a piece of metal. It doesn't taste very nice, and it's very hard to get out. Um, and it's even harder to make yourself sandwiches in the morning. Okay then, so do that. Fit it into an approximately square shape. Place it inside, push it down. Just cover up with tea towel. Alright guys again, um, so we've left the bread for about another 15 minutes. Um, it's risen to about twice the size. Um, you can cut some nice lines in it to make it look pretty. Um, if you get bored of eating plain flat loaf like bread, you can obviously make a round square, whatever size bread you want. It's just a pizza tray. Um, anything that's non-stick or just flour it and it'll not stick. Um, make sure you preheat your oven to about 200 degrees centigrade and um, if you're like me and you're cheap, you cook everything at the same time, so there's a curry in there as well. Um, place it in there and about 30 minutes on 200 degrees. Um, easiest way to find it if it's done or not is to um, turn it out when it's reasonably solid. Um, tap the top, if it sounds hollow, it's cooked, and if you tap the bottom, it should sound even more hollow. Okay then, so we've um, finished our bread making, hopefully. Um, it should be well and truly done by now. So, if you tap it, and then just turn it out, if you've greased it well, it should come out. And that's reasonably solid. Um, it's been in the oven about 45, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, that's
that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, obviously when you're leaving it to dry, get yourself a um, wire rack to dry things on. Uh, that'll stop the bread from going slop on the And um, yeah, that's it. Have fun. Hey folks, uh, there's a tree that was hanging uh, in some branches. There's a big old branch, uh, dead wood hanging, and uh, I decided to pull it down. And uh, guess I'm just gonna cut the cut the limbs off now. Um, it was it's part of my neighbor's property, I guess, but it was the limb had broken off and it was leaning over my property and I realized I'd been walking under this dead tree uh, for a long time and uh, just thought, you know, that probably wasn't so safe, I should just pull it down uh, once I realized it was dead and uh, so I did that today and, uh, here I'll show you this is this huge tree limb and these branches over here too so just gonna take my handy dandy saw and uh, harvest some some wood from this thing Episode one. Yep. Full of uh, interesting shit. I hope we hope you enjoyed it all. Um, if you think it should have been longer or shorter, or if you had any comments at all to make on it, get in touch with us yep. at uh, inquiries at rangers.info. Yep, that's our new website address, rangers.info. We finally bowed to the pressure. Here. Yeah. Yeah. At nipple height. Um, at nipple height cost us the princess sum of one pound. 99 pence mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be hosted on a proper web server so it'll stop going down in the future so everybody that's out there will probably go woohoo you know and uh, we'll be using the rack for other projects we will be using the rack so I mean, all the stuff we've got here local but um, for the website because of how I think because of how big we've got we need to have a, an actual dedicated server and uh, so we've done that now be over the time. yeah that too yeah. So uh, get in touch with us at inquiries at rangers.info or submissions if you've got any ideas or anything that you'd like to see in the show, that's great. We've already had one, um, one submissions entry which we'll be taking note of and trying to produce something along the lines of. Yep. But that in, involves a little bit of research. Does. So uh, thanks to our contributors, Avadu and... Uh, Harlequin. Harlequin. Uh, you've both seen the, uh, the submissions for this particular episode. Or is it me or did they look weirdly similar? They do look kind of similar. Maybe the judge outlines are open. Send us on a postcard to anyone but us. Yes, send them far, far away. And uh, get in touch with us, let us know if you liked it. Um, leave a review on the archive.org, which is where you should have uh, probably got it from, which is the only place it is. And if you want to mirror it, please feel free. It's completely free content, so run away. Yep. Copy it and post it up there. Do whatever you want with it. 
and that's kind of the idea of the show. So, you know, if you have anything, all you need is a camera, or even a webcam will do, that's highly improved. Yep. If you've got a good idea, get it into us, uh, and get in touch with us first, and then we'll, we'll get an FTP location you can go get it from. And we'll put it out on the internet. And it'll put it out on Rangers TV. Yep. In the upcoming week, we'll probably have some sort of Rangers TV mini episode. We're hoping to do a mini episode a week, and then a, a larger episode once per month. Yep. And that's only going to work if you people send us stuff. All the um, submissions will be in large episodes. The, the submissions will be in the large episodes, mini episodes, yes. will be just stuff, stuff that we shoot. Yep. And that's, that's it. That's it. Okay. We'll see you next month. Take care. Why do I want to be a ranger? I wanted to become an effective individual. I wanted to weaponize my mind. I wanted to be the first man on my street to make a TV show. To tell the people out there what they really need to know. How they can improve their lives. Not through some sort of self-help book or get-rich-quick scheme but through the knowledge of knowing how to do interesting things through the skills that one acquires through going out there and doing something through knowing how to protect yourself in any event through being able to survive in a rural or urban environment. That's why I'm a ranger.